All right, dude. <laughs> I love these characters that we've created. Oh, Buzzer. Broski. Buzzer. Broski, what's going on, Broski? Is this still re it's still recording? Cool, I can actually edit stuff while it's recording. That's great. I love that for me. It is too cold here. It is not. I don't. Are you actually cold right I'm, now? I have three layers on and a big jacket, and I'm still freezing cold. I don't get how you're in a t-shirt. You just built different. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to laugh like Seth Rogen, but I can't laugh right like Seth Rogen, so I'm like... <laughs> Seth Rogen has a weird laugh. I love his laugh, though. It's great. Great laugh. Um, so if we sound different, it's because we're recording with a different setup. Uh, it is the most terrifying experience I've ever done. Taylor's very stressed. I'm so stressed about this because I forgot to bring my... I forgot to bring a microphone clip, right? So Randy's just holding her microphone. I don't even this know. This is gonna how be that... great. This I'm so excited to be holding the mic. Yeah, you're gonna be holding it for like an hour. I have all the power. <laughs> 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 I do not like this. I do not like this at all. Um I have all the power. Kill me. Kill me now. Kill me, Faza. <laughs> oh, no. no. Ugh, I'm tired. Oh, that's obvious. <laughs> you I, can't keep your eyes open. So this is media for the intellectually impoverished. I'm Randy. I'm Taylor. <laughs> this is where we enrich your media ochre lives. All right, to my right side hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor has an infection in his eye. Um, and I tried to make a joke about him not being able to open his eyes, but you can't tell that he has an infection in his eye, so. Yeah, you can't see me. If you could, you'd be laughing at how ridiculous I look, because. Yeah, it looks pretty redonk, like, and I'm not even gonna, not even gonna lie, like, I have a ridiculously looking face right now, because, like, both of my eyes are a little I wasn't swollen. talking about you. Who said anything about you? I was talking about me. I look like Bernie Sanders. Oh, well, I look ridiculous, too. If you want. Uh, wow. <laughs> that face is glorious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I'm really excited for next Tuesday because I was in a sketch for the YouTube channel Topographical Gang, who you know. Oh, yeah, I know them. Oh, yeah, I know them. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know them. <laughs> Um, yeah, Topographical Gang on YouTube. It's a comedy sketch channel, uh, and they're good friends of ours, and they invited me to act on another one of their skits. I was on their skits a long time ago, and I was the reason they got famous. Thank you. No, don't nobody listen to him. He's uh, spitting lies. <laughs> well, the video that I was in was one that went viral first. Um, where it's uh, called People Just Moving a TV, and it's two guys moving a TV, but uh, it's not, it doesn't go well. Go watch it. It just didn't. It didn't go well. <laughs> no. Uh, and then in this most recent one that we recorded, um, was really exciting because I played like this guy that was just high off. You his look nuts. high. Can I be honest? Yeah. I mean, you know. Anyway, this is me for the intellectually <laughs> impoverished. If you were trying to make a joke that I did not. It went whoop, over my head. This is me for the intellectually impoverished. I'm. You can stick it out farther if you need. Oh, what's today's topic, Randy? We're talking about trippy movies, video games, media. You know, because it's media for the intellectually impoverished. Yeah, I mean, it's technically video games and movies for the intellectually impoverished and TV shows sometimes, but that's too long of a title. And, and sometimes musicals. Sometimes musicals. And I, sometimes books. Actually, that's all you. I know, because you don't bring anything new to the table. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I'm being honest, it's because the only type of media I consume is video games. You need to branch out. Do I? Because. I don't know. You have a podcast that <laughs> I talks mean, about media. <laughs> I listen to other podcasts. Thank you. Are we ever, oh, my God. That's so meta. We should talk about podcasts on our podcast. We're going to do that eventually for a pocket change episode. Listen, coming soon to um, a theater no, near you. Except that theaters are closed, so there's none. To a uh, a streaming service uh, near you, uh, media for the intellectually impoverished is launching. I can't think. Of, I'm not good with the jokes. I'm a bad joke person. You know, like 85 percent of our channel is supposed to be comedy, right? I mean, I make fun of you. 
that works. works. You know, it works. It does. It works. It does pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've gone this long. <laughs> we've got this much content. Um, we're talking about trippy things, and I went first last week. I know oh, that because I it. just oh, listened to that. Oh, dang it. Oh, dig, dang, dang oh, dang, it. Oh, dang it, dang it. All right, you go. Okay. Um, nope, now I'm scared. <laughs> okay, great, I'll go. <laughs> no, no, I can do this. I'm, I'm an independent uh, young woman. So we're talking about trippy movies. Um, honestly, haven't seen that many, but the first ones that came to mind were like Inception. I've never seen Inception. Please, you've never please seen. Please don't come for me. You've never seen Inception. I mean, I get the general like premises. There's premises. I mean, you mean premise? Are you telling me that there's not multiple themes in that movie? Because I would highly doubt that there is multiple themes in that movie. Well, a premise is typically like you talk about that as a singular thing, over the, especially in since. Anyway, this is meaty for the intellectually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I've never seen it. Um, and that was the only trippy movie that came to mind. And then a, a great professor of mine, I shouldn't call him great. No, to take that back. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear me? Have you listened to the violence episode? I have not. Uh, you haven't even. Li- oh, I had a great bit where I was like, let's roll that back. And then I put like a reverse sound. Nice, and I nice, it nice, 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 nice. It was so great. I was so proud of the of the 25 minutes it took me to figure that out. Well, you're doing it again, so. Uh, well, um, that's not up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> okay, but I had a professor give me um, a bunch of ideas of what to watch. And one of the movies that he recommended was uh, The Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Eternal sun sh- Sun's Shine of a Spotless Mind. Didn't watch that one. I did watch <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I knew I'd get you. <laughs> <laughs> solid, solid. That was a good one. <laughs> I did watch The Fountain, however. Have you ever heard of it? I have not heard of The Fountain. Okay, it came out in 2016. It was directed by Darren. I always say Aaron Kofsky, but that's not it. Aaron Sofsky. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Aaron. I'm sorry, Aaron. <laughs> Bring that bit back. Come on, come on. Uh, um, it was a great film. So I stayed up until two in the morning watching it with my dad. Do not watch it at two in the morning. It doesn't make sense. That's that's prime time to watch something trippy. Trippy, yeah. And so first, before I go into what the movie is about, I just wanted to give like a general idea of what we mean by trippy. Or... I thought that we weren't going to do that and that we would just like go the whole episode and at the end we'd be like, oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> by the here's way, our this definition. This is what trippy is. Do you have a definition? <laughs> I don't have a definition. Oh, I have a definition kind of. Uh, okay, you do it then. I don't want to. Well, I was just going to say it's, it's especially when it comes to movies, I think trippy comes from where there's a blur between the lines of real life and fantasy or dream which movies are already supposed to be like a fantasy but within the context of the film a lot li- the blur occurs between the line of what is reality and what is an imaginative state or a uh, convoluted mixing of the timeline so if the ending comes first and then the beginning that i think that's classified as a trippy movie yep that's me bet you're wondering how i got here that bit? Yeah, definitely. Is that trippy? I think that's trippy. Oh, interesting. I don't, I mean. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying I think that your viewpoint on that is interesting. I'm being a little, a little cynical today. I have cynical. You are cynical, very cynical. Cynical, cynical. Cynicality in my blood. C- cynicality. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is media for the intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> How many times can I do that bit before you get tired of it? I'm already tired already of it. Already tired of the, it? The second time it was it was done. <laughs> well, the way that I describe describe sort of trippy games, media, uh, for me, it's... I, I like what you said where it was the, the sort of blurring between like what's real life and what's this sort of imaginative reality. For me, it has a lot to do with sort of the visuals and... Um, the ability to create something that subverts our idea of reality. Mm-hmm. Something that is uh, able to, like you said, blur that line, just mm-hmm. sort of toe the side of like, well, this is definitely real in the fact that it is, you know, it is a story that I am tangibly able to take in, but its contents are are blurring this sort of, or or very grayed out on whether or not it's reality Mm -hmm. and trying to pinpoint 
meaning behind that, I think, is the essence of the trippy movie or piece of media. Yeah. So I watched The Fountain. And to give a brief synopsis of it, I will give you the actual line from what it says on Amazon. I don't remember the guy's name, but it's Hugh Jackman must travel through the past, present, and future to save his wife. Now, what does that sound like to you? Were you listening? No. <laughs> <laughs> a man, Hugh Jackman, okay. must travel through the past, present, and future to save his wife. Uh, uh. Okay, well, I'm going to hand it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so the word travel throws me off, because I thought he was going to be a time traveler. He's not. Please, uh... Uh, disclaimer, please go watch the film. Even though I watched it at 2 in the morning, it was an incredible film. I think it has a very powerful message. Please go watch it because I will definitely be spoiling it here because that's the only way to talk about the yeah, movie. Yeah, I should have said that. Like The only way to talk about any piece of trippy media is to spoil it. Spoil it, exactly. Because like, we have to, in, in order for us to dig into we have, yeah. <laughs> it, we have to be like, okay, well, here's the plot. and Here's, here's the what happens. <laughs> yep. So please, no, I'm 100% serious. Please go watch it. It's only an hour and a half long. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. So I thought he was going to be traveling like in a time machine to the past and like the present and the future. No, you are watching three consecutive timelines taking place in the past, in the present, and in the future. And each one covers the same thing. It's about a man who is trying to search for the antidote to life because his wife or the w woman he loves is dying. And so he's trying to find the tree of life that was uh, said to be next in the Garden of Eden with the Tree of Knowledge, uh, and in each line he's tr he's looking for the this Tree of Life so that he can save his wife. And at the same time, it shows his fear of death, and that's what I love about the film. It's such an interesting way to talk about a fear of death because she, the entire film, is. She says that I'm fine, I'm at peace, and he's like, "Good, that's great. I'm gonna leave you to go find the cure." So like bye, and <laughs> he what? Well, good good luck with your uh, debilitating <laughs> illness. I'm gonna go try and save you. Literally, everybody in the film is like, "Why don't you spend time with her?" She's like, she doesn't have long, and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna find the cure." No, you're not. Go spend time with her. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting, and you you're really confused at the beginning because first it takes place. In like the 1500s, uh, it's a, a Spanish conquistador, and he's uh, infiltrated the Mayan civilization or temple, and he, he makes it to the top of the temple, and he must battle this final soldier to get to the Tree of Life. And every time, so it repeats a couple of times, every time he tries to battle the, the soldier, he kills him first, which again shows his fear of death because he doesn't want to die, and then he like relives it because he can't live with the fact that he died. I don't know. And then... Right? Interesting. Right? So does he, like, he dies, and then, like, he, what, it, like, it just backs up? It doesn't immediately back up. We go to a different time. We go, like, then we switch to the present, and we, I, I'm using my foot, because I can't move my hands. I'm holding a mic. Yeah, you talk with your hands, and you don't have your hands. Hands, so, so I'm going to move my she's foot. She's using her feet to gesture, and it is, <laughs> it is unpleasant. <laughs> But no, then it switches to the next timeline where he's in the present, and so in the present, he is a... A doctor who is, is uh, experimenting on chimpanzees to figure out how to stop the growth of a tumor, and he finds he finds it in a tree. The cure to the tumor? Not to, yeah. Well, you don't find that out to the very end. So what happens is they take this tree sample from South America. I forgot what we were talking about. The present, he's uh, a scientist, and he's. He found a tree of life inside of a tree. And he found a tree. So they had an old sample of a tree from South America, and they used that and put it in the monkey. And then the monkey started reverse aging. So, like, his memory started coming back and all of his cognitive abilities and things like that. Um, but his tumor wasn't shrinking. And so the doctor, the guy, he's like, well, I have to keep working because it needs to shrink. And the other people are like, no, but... But it it worked. It's we can we can stop aging. And then he's like, no, but the tumor that's the problem because his wife mm -hmm. has a tumor. Um, but I just again I love the repetition of the tree throughout all of the stories. And then in the future, he's literally in a bubble with a tree, and he's like a monk. He's he's bald. He has tattoos all over his body. Hugh Jackman, <laughs> and he has a tree. And the tree is his wife. The tree is, is his, his wife. wife. 
No, and so you get that at the very beginning of the movie because he goes up and he's talking to the tree and he keeps poking the tree. He keeps poking the tree. I feel like I'm not talking right into it. And the the hairs on the tree, which is strange because there's hairs on a tree, like follow him and they're like pulling out to his finger. They're following his finger. And so you're like, oh, that's a sentient tree. Mm-hmm. And it's his wife. And then later you find out that at the very end, you find out that on her grave, he buried a uh, a seed. <laughs> Anyways, media for the interesting <laughs> topic. <laughs> Oh man, I wish we could just leave that silence in, but we can't. Oh, it's so good. It's a good bit. That would be great. Okay, continue. So, I mean, oh my god, what did I just do? <laughs> I give up. Oh my god! Let's go home. Let's just go home. I don't want to do it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> added a montage in the middle of this of us just making like noises oh, frustrated such, noises such a, such a bad time <laughs> such, such bad time such bad time okay but I'm explaining um, this are you are we what what are we really doing stop here? being cynical no, get but, your no, shit together but, but for real what are we doing here <laughs> what is what is the purpose get it together alright continue god <laughs> Do you're it. just upset that you're not the one talking right now. No. 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 <laughs> I'm upset. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset because I'm having a bad time figuring out all of these problems on the fly. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm explaining this movie. Anyway, this is media for the entire... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a good one. <laughs> but you cut me off. <laughs> okay. So I'm speaking about this movie as if it was that clear cut to begin with, and it wasn't. So again, all of the stories were intertwined with one another. So you're constantly going from the present to the past to the future. And in the beginning, it none of it makes sense. I, again, the very first thing that you see is the 1500 conquistador. And then we go away to the future with him as a monk and this tree. And you don't understand what's going on. All you know is that he's trying to save someone, but you don't know why until we finally get to what is present day and we discover that his wife has a tumor. And not only that, we don't even, it's never said anywhere that she has a tumor or she never talks about, he never talks about it. All you know is that he is constantly looking for a cure for her. And that's where the, and the fact that the monkey has a tumor and that he's not letting it go, that you realize that that's what's happening. But she is... I love the dynamic between, and I think that's what adds, so the trippiness definitely comes from, and that's why I said the time thing, that I think the timeline being out of whack can make a movie trippy, because that's what this whole movie was basically, it was just the story taken out of context and put into a different uh, sequence. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that it was so far in the past that they had to wear different costumes and it was a whole different era and the fact that he was so far in the future that he was just floating around in space with a tree. Did I mention that? He's floating in He's space? He's in a bubble with a tree in space. How, how, how big is how? the bubble? Huge. Huge. How big is the tree? Huge. It's a decent sized tree. It's like a, it's an old oak tree is what I'm assuming. Yeah. Pretty, so it's a pretty big tree, and then the bubble's huge. He has enough room to walk around and everything, and he makes ink because he gives himself tattoos, and you don't realize why he gives himself tattoos until the very end because he lost his wedding ring, and then she passed away, and then he tattooed his wedding ring on his finger. And then every year since then, he's tattooed a line around his arm. At the very end, you see that he has these lines all the way up his body. This man, that's my, my gripe with the movie. How did you get into space? Here's the thing. So you said that in the um, in the present day section when they're working with the monkey, they come up with like the cure for like aging. Aging, right? Mm-hmm. So is the guy in the present and the guy in the bubble the same person? Yeah. What about the guy in the past? What is he? He's him. They're all the same person. Yep. So he found the fountain of youth, right? That's what we're guessing. Kind of found a life or something, mm-hmm. but he kept himself young that entire but like no so here's the thing so the past isn't really the past 
Mm-hmm. And you don't realize this until the very, uh, towards the end of the film. The past is actually a, a story. So he's, his wife, before she passed away, she was writing what was happening to them in a story. That's why the the same theme can be seen throughout all three times. She was writing about, oh, what if this was happening back in the 1500s and my husband was a conquistador and I was the queen of Spain. And so I tell him, oh, Spain is going to die. We are going to die if you don't find the fountain of youth, if you don't find this tree of life. And then he goes out, he's a conquistador, and he goes out to try and find it. But when you're watching it at the beginning in the 1500s, you don't realize it's a story. And again, you don't realize it until almost the end when she shows him the book that it says the fountain. The book is called The Fountain. As soon as I saw that, I was like, roll credits. Beautiful. There you go. There you go. Done. Mm-hmm. And then she's tasked him with, after passing away, he has to write the last chapter. And so then the last chapter is, oh, I can't, I can't do it. Can't spoil it? I don't want to spoil it. It's so good. The ending doesn't make any sense. And me and, again, me and my dad were watching it and he got up and he I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have an idea. So... I feel like I'm not talking enough about the trippiness of the movie. I think I've hit it pretty well. I've just been talking about the plot points, but what makes it trippy, again, the sequential, the difference in the timelines, and the ending where the timelines converge. Yeah. (laughs) So what's the real him? Is him the present the real him, or is him the future the real him? I'm going to guess the future, thinking back about the past. Yeah. That's my guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's reliving. Oh, it's a story within a story. Within a story within a story. So he's, as he's trying to save the tree, which is his wife, because he's, he planted the seed, he is reliving the day that she died, or the week leading up to her death. And in that week, he's reading the story about being in the 1500s. Anyways, let me get to the ending. So please, again, go watch the movie. But the ending, she dies again. The tree dies. He didn't get to the space that he wanted to because he was uh, he was looking for the tree of life in space. Like that's where he that's where he was going. Um, And so she died again. In each of these, she dies. Um, But he finally comes to terms with the fact that you can't live forever. You can't be immortal. And after he accepts this and he gets rid of his fear of death, he dies. And when he dies, we then travel back to the 1500s as him as a conquistador finally defeats that soldier and gets to the tree of life. So in each of these stories, we're seeing, oh, he's finally he's finally finding like his tree of life or something. Or he's finally getting to the end of his journey. Let me. I just want to explain it, and then you tell me what it means. He finds the, the King Gisador finds a tree of life in fifteen hundreds. He drinks from it, and then he dies. No, the meaning of life is death. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That is. Oh my god. Because what is life without death? Without what is what is it? Because the point of, not the point of life, but to truly experience life, there has to be death. Mm-hmm. You have to have this finite amount of time. You know. Otherwise, it's just like, well, I'm here forever. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. But if you have have this sense of like, of like, it's going to end. Like, I'm gonna die, and you're gonna die at some point. Could be in 20 minutes. That'd be awkward. Oh my god. <laughs> It'd be awkward podcasting. Um, it could be in 20 minutes. It could be in 30 years. Like, who, who knows? But like, eventually, we're going to die. And that idea of like, I have a finite amount of time to make my mark and to do the things I want to do is what creates life. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, and another thing that another thing that's seen throughout the movie is that death is an act of creation. So from death comes life. When she dies, she becomes a tree. When the soldier dies, he turns into a bunch of flowers. And I and there's also this star that is seen throughout the film, and it is in the midst of dying. And from that, a new star will be born. Mm-hmm. And I just I love. I don't know, time, I've said it before, I love movies that deal with time. And I think that's what's so great about film is that you can mess with time. You can't really do that with any other media, I'm trying to think, where you can bend time to your will. 
it's very difficult. Um, I think that there are some games that kind of play with that, um, or that attempt to play with that possibility. There is, uh, well, you know, I don't remember the name of it, so I'm not going to mention it, but there is a game, um, that plays with time in, in an interesting way. Um, and it, but, but it's not, it's not as easy as in a uh, movie or television. Mm-hmm. But if you like playing with time, then you're going to really like one of the things that I have up, which can I talk about it? Are you finished with it? That was a great segue. I don't uh, know why you asked me. That was a great segue. Well, I'm always afraid that when I start, because I like to steamroll. You do like to steamroll. But I'm not going to steamroll. I'm going to do my best not to. So one of the things that I picked was a movie. A movie? That's mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> Buzzer. <laughs> Buzzer. Um, no, I'm talking about a movie, which is so rare for me, but that means that it must be a good movie, right? I am talking about the movie I'm Thinking of Ending Things, uh, directed by what's, uh, what looks like Charlie Kaufman in my notes, but uh, I cannot clearly decipher it. Sorry, Charles, if I butchered your name. Um, movie is so... <laughs> it was a good joke. It was a good joke. <laughs> you can laugh. Um, this movie is, is extremely interesting and one of the most trippy movies I've ever watched. Right. So, spoilers. So many spoilers ahead. But do you recommend the movie? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I do recommend the movie. Go because watch if it. you didn't care, you'd be, it doesn't matter about spoilers. It, yeah, the movie is purposefully inconsistent. So once they get to the house, um, she is sort of standing in, in the doorway and he puts the coat up and they're just having a conversation and, and the parents aren't like, they aren't, like, they're not there. They don't seem like they're home. You're not hearing them respond when Jake calls for them. And it's, he's, he's like, they're here. They're here. They're just upstairs. They're here. And it's really awkward and strange. And, and he, they're, they're standing there and talking and she's like, well, maybe this isn't, and she's, she's having this inner monologue, this inner dialogue with herself for a majority of the movie. A lot of the movie she talks to herself when there's nothing going on. Um, and it is really, it's strange because it kind of seems like Jake can hear her thoughts. Like, whenever she'll say something interesting in her head, he kind of gives her a look. Like, a weird look. Like, she's saying something that he can hear. Um, but she's not. She's saying it in her head. And so, that's one thing that's really strange. Another thing that's really strange is the parents just sort of appear. Like, they're just like, boom, they're there. They, like, come down the stairs, and then suddenly there's all this commotion. So, it's, like, very slow, 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 slow. And then immediately the action picks up, picks up and it, it, things happen. And then it, it, things will be happening for a while, and then suddenly they'll just drop like a pin and then it's back to like no action and so that's sort of inconsistent like um i don't know what you call it sort of zigzaggy kind of plot thing is it adds to the tension because like you're like oh well, it's really calm now and then suddenly bang like something like someone's crashing a symbol behind you and then just like jolt of just energy and then it's like you have to right as soon as that energy dies off like in you they pick back up again so like mm. it, it is really well timed that's really well edited. brilliant and so you never really feel comfortable with the movie yeah no, no. definitely it, you're on tension you're walking on eggshells the entire time the movie's like two and a half hours long it oh is, no i is, would die it is a long movie my anxiety worth it though for the ending it is it's so worth it you're telling me having a panic attack is worth the ending worth the ending absolutely that's a big statement it is so good it is so interesting and as the story continues, um, she's, you know, conversing with the parents and they're talking about things and the parents seem kind of off, a little bit off. And Everything then, in this movie seems off. But the parents specifically seem rather off. Like they don't have everything there. Like something's, mi like something's missing in their head and they don't remember things correctly or okay. at all because the mother will keep repeating things that have happened and the father doesn't seem to really notice anything that's going on. Um, he seems kind of absent-minded. And then... Uh, you cut away, and then they, they're leaving to go set up dinner, and the dinner's not there, and then she looks away and turns back, and suddenly, boom, dinner covering the table. Amazing, like, full-course Thanksgiving meal. And then the parents come in, and they're, like, like, they were maybe in their 40s, 50s before, and then, boom, they're, like, in their 80s, out of nowhere. And they're talking, and he's, like, the characters are really old, and it's, it's so confusing, and then... Whenever the, the Jake, the boyfriend, will mention something like, oh, we've had a dog once. Like, we see a dog, but he's like, oh, do you have a dog? And he's like, no. And then she looks away and looks down, and suddenly there's a dog. And then 
She looks away. I love this movie. And then the dog disappears. I love this movie. And then the pictures on the wall are very strange. And like one of the pictures has a picture of her in it. And he and she doesn't remember taking that photo. And it's all of these tiny little details that are interesting and inconsistent with the rest of the movie. That's the perfect way to describe it. It's inconsistent. Because I was going to say, maybe it's like fourth wall breaking. No, it's not. It's, it's just inconsistent. Yeah, and it's purposefully inconsistent. Yeah. And so for about an hour, you're inside of the house, and every time there's a scene, scenery change, every time that they the character main character moves from one place to another and the parents return, they're a completely different age. Like, they were 80 when they were at the table, and then suddenly they're like, Really young, like in their twenties. Are the the couple staying the same age? Yes, the couple. Okay, stays that the doesn't same make age. any sense. And then as the movie progresses, it's juxtaposed with this um, scenery of an old janitor sort of cleaning up a school during a school play, right? So there's two sort of the, these two storylines are kind of going on side by side. Love it. And the the janitor's just kind of going through his daily life, and then he sits in the break room and he watches a movie. Um, like a romance comedy movie and with two actors and it's important that scene is important and i'll tell you why once we get to the end um so as the movie progresses they have the dinner she's the, the snowstorm starts building up and she's like i want to go home she's like i want to jake i want to go home i really want to go home but he's like he's like yeah i just need to put the i just need to put the the chains on the tires and he goes out and he puts the chains on the tires and then finally Finally, after like an hour of her being like, let's just go home. Let's just take me home. I need to be home. I have things to do. He finally takes her and they leave and they're driving out in this blizzard and they're having really awkward conversation and that continues for a little while and I don't want to spoil it. And also it's been a little while since I've watched it. So I don't remember specifics conversation wise. But then during that scene while they're talking in the car, they're kind of having a, a heated debate about something. And then the camera pans this is like pretty much a one shot, almost. There's a couple of cuts here and there. The camera pans over sort of, you know, like the corner of the car right where the window meets the windshield of mm -hmm. the brake, right? Yeah. Pans over that brake, and as it pans over that brake, the actress that is playing the girlfriend changes to the female actress in the movie the janitor was watching. Out of nowhere. Just switches to that character. And then... I've, it cuts away and it cuts back and then she's back to normal. Right? It's so strange and so interesting and it'll make sense in a little bit. I'm going to say you better, this better pay off. It's going to pay off. And then a couple more things happen and they end up at, he's like, oh, let me take you to my old school. Like he's not wanting to take her home and it seems really suspicious and it's really upsetting her. This, can I just say real quick, this is just giving me Get Out vibes. I've never like, seen Get Out. Okay, but it's just giving, it's not, obviously, it's not the same thing. Get Out is, is it's a very different movie, but it's along the same lines where it's like a boyfriend, girlfriend, one of them's acting like strange the whole time, and they're in a very like strange situation. Nobody's explaining or talking about what they really want to do, things like that. Just giving me those kind of vibes, but continue. Mm -hmm. There's a couple more stops along the way um, that I'm not mentioning just because they're, they're not super important to what I'm about to be saying. Um, and then... Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to mention the stop. Whoa. I changed my mind. I totally 180'd it. So they stop at this sort of slushy place because he's like, I just want a slushy. I just want a slushy. Let's just stop at this place. And there's they've been on the road for like 20, 30 minutes. Nothing. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, slushy stand. Middle of nowhere. Literally nothing else around it. So they go and um, she's talking to the person and she's like, He's like, she's like, do you want a slushy? And he's like, no, I don't really want a slushy. Then she's ordering a slushy for herself. And she's like, just get a slushy. And he's like, okay. And he's acting really weird. And there's a bunch of girls that are uh, talking like amongst themselves that are serving the slushies, right? And it's just those two girls and then the two of them. And then suddenly this one girl comes at the back. And the first two girls weren't like doing anything. And this other girl gives you the gives the main character a slushie, and he's like, "You don't have to stay if you don't want to." And she's like, "What?" And then Jake walks up and sort of interrupts the conversation, and then they continue on. And then she gets back in the car, and they make it to his school. He's like, "I want to just show you my school. Like, let me just show you where. Like, this is where I went to school." And they pull in, and there's one car sitting out in the parking lot, and um, a couple things happen. Basically, Jake ends up inside the building and the girl is like well i need to go find him so she goes inside to go find him and then this is where the two plot lines sort of converge the janitor and the woman 
um, and they sort of meet in the middle. And she's walking around looking for him. And then the janitor comes out of the hallway and she starts talking to the janitor. And the janitor is like really like sees her and he's like, <gasps> and he's like really teary eyed and stuff. And it's really confusing. And she has this like pent up rage moment where she, she releases all of this stuff that she's been thinking but not saying. And, and she gets it all out to the janitor. And then they that scene ends with like an awkward hug. And then immediately after that scene, she finds Jake. And then they're standing there. And then behind them, you, classical music begins to play. And then behind them, two dancers enter wearing the same costumes and perform this intricate, I'm talking really intricate, like dance scene telling this story of a boy and a woman falling in love. And then a janitor coming and attempting to rape one of the woman or like take the woman away. And then the main character dying and the janitor getting the girl. And then that that happens, and then no context, nothing, and then suddenly you're in a um, in the theater where they were practicing that that play I was talking about, and uh, Jake is up on the stage winning the Nobel Prize, which is something that he talked about a while back. He's like he's like I wanted to win the Nobel Prize for being a physicist or whatever, and he accepts his Nobel Prize and then breaks out into a song from I believe the musical Oklahoma. And he finishes the song. You see the main character girl out, sitting out, and everyone's wearing, like, stage makeup to make them look older. But it's very obviously stage makeup. And then you see her. She has a tear in her eye. She claps. It looks back at him. Movie ends. You said it was going to pay off. It's going to pay off, and here's how it pays off. So you see at the very end, the janitor um, sort of lose his mind. And... But right before this scene with Oklahoma, you see the janitor kind of lose his mind. And there's another plot point, sort of another story that I didn't really mention. That's not, you, you can get it if you get it. It's not like a plot, but it is a story that they mentioned. And I'm not going to go into it. Basically, he basically, the janitor strips naked and walks around the halls of the school naked. And he's like lost his mind. And so here's here's what it is i'm trying to no you want to you want to take a gander take a gander i'm trying to piece it all together because this is what i live for this is what makes i love watching movies and guessing the endings because i can do it about 80 percent of the time that's a that is a big number i can no 100 i got 100 percent of the time you get it 80 percent of the time 100 percent of the time i get it 80 percent of the time so I'm just, I want to say that there's something wrong with the woman, like it's, it's schizophrenia or something, because I wonder if it's from her perspective and she's like imagining all of this, because things appear out of nowhere and you said that she's narrating, but that doesn't seem it, because then where does the janitor come in? Why are we watching his side of the story? Is it about the janitor? Is he the man who lost? Like, she does break up with him, and then he grows old, and he becomes the janitor. And is But as he's going crazy, like, it's his whole mind. Like, all that that we just heard was the janitor, like, reliving, like, oh, I wish I would have done this or that this would have happened, but I'm just a lowly janitor because she broke up with me or something. I don't know. Those are just where my two ideas were. It's probably neither of those. But pretty go ahead. close. You're pretty close. Go ahead. Kind of a mixture of the two ideas. Really? Okay. Yeah, so... This is actually based off of a novel. The novel goes way into more detail of explaining the ending, but the the filmmaker was just like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then he left it ambiguous, which I love because it was great. So from what I took away from it, from what I understand, and I also did read, you know, like an interview with the director about his thoughts on it and, you know, what he did. This is basically all playing out inside the mind of the janitor. I got it. Yeah, you were pretty good. So... This is all playing out inside of the mind of the janitor while he's cleaning this sort of school place. And um, I believe that the school place is sort of his, not his, it's kind of like his happy place, I guess. Okay. So I don't think that the school really exists. Okay. I kind of think he's just an old man that's just sort of like thinking out his days and his last couple of days of life. Or yeah, whatever. he's he's just, he's already lost his mind and this is how he's like coping with coping it. With it. Um, so, this girl is completely made up. Yeah. Just his ideal girl. Mm. Right? And so, he's living through this scenario of meeting, her meeting his parents. Right? So, it is him! Yeah. Okay. So, her meeting his parents. I got it! He did. Um, 80% of the time. 80, 100% of the time, 80% of the time. 
<laughs> um, meeting his parents, and that's why the when they're at the house, the world seems so strange. Yeah. And, like things suddenly appear. It's because he's just imagining it. Because he's yeah. He's remembering things and imagining things. And at one point, you watch the mom die, and then you have to walk go through that. And it's like. You just you're reliving like he's remembering these things, and as he remembers these things, you know, like when you're thinking, and then you're thinking about something, and then suddenly a thought pops into your head, and like now something you think, else, and it ruins it, yeah, or like it ruins it. But and it also, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you, but it it makes sense why the parents were constantly changing age because he's seen them all of those ages, yes. and he couldn't keep it straight in his mind. Like how old would they be in this scenario? Or maybe it was I just can't remember how they would act. Like for this specific part of the dinner, I just think this is how they would act, and then it's their older selves because mm -hmm. that's the most recent thing he remembers anyways go ahead yeah and it's and it's brilliant and then once they leave um and they they get to this sort of like remember how i said he's what the janitor is watching a movie a romantic comedy yeah so i think what was happening is, is as he was watching that movie if that was like the real world he's seeing that girl and then she suddenly becomes the ideal girl for him and then in that moment, oh. she changes actresses mm -hmm. into that actress from the movie within the movie. Yeah. And that's why she looks like that. And then suddenly he's done watching the movie and she snaps back to normal. Yeah. Um, then they get to the school and he's sort of reliving this scenario. And then he finally meets her mm -hmm. in his mind. He meets her. Yeah. And then they have this big moment. And she says all these things that he and, and she's thinking about breaking up with him. Because he thinks he's not worthy, worthy of, of any her. girl. Mm -hmm. And so... Oh, God. Yeah, and then remember I said that she, he was kind of noticing things she was saying in her head? It's because yeah, he's he thinking, was imagining it. He was thinking her thinking those things. Oh, my God. It is, it is brilliant. It is so brilliant. And it is so worth the watch. I got it. I just... Can I just... I got it. Got it. 100% of the time, 80% of the, of the time. time. That's me. That's me. They call me old 180%. I couldn't figure out the mystery on the Orient Express, but that was a cop-out, I think. Anyways. <laughs> Have you seen the Orient Express? No. Nah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was... It was such a, an interesting watch, and I watched it with my brother, because my brother and I, well, every time we're home alone, my parents are gone doing whatever they do, um, we'll watch just a random movie, and... We picked this one. He had been wanting to watch it, and I was like, ah, it doesn't look like a horror movie because we usually watch horror movies or thriller movies or whatever. But then we picked this one, and we watched it, and we, we spent the next hour just like, what was, th what was this thing? What was this? How did this? What was going on? It was, oh, it was so great. It was such a, it's such a great experience to, to go through, and it really does pay off at the end, and I think that's what's nice. It, it doesn't pay off at the end of the movie. It pays off when you, like, Think about you it think about and it. you ruminate. And that's what I think I find interesting about like trippy movies. No, and that's the exact same way that it was with the fountain. Like I said, I didn't understand it. My dad didn't understand it. And we sat there for 30 minutes and tried to explain it to each other. And like you just said, like, okay, what about this? Well, well then this happened and then this happened. And what does this mean? And do all of like the timelines converge? And was it real? And I that's the best part about trippy movies is the is explaining it at the end, mm. I think. Definitely. Um. Yeah, we're gonna do something different. We're just trying to put, you know, we're trying to shorten our episodes, so we're just gonna have one piece of media each. Okay. All right. So those were our pieces of media, so now we're gonna scoot on over to recommendations. I'm gonna recommend Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. <laughs> <laughs> that one that you didn't watch. Nice. I've seen it before. I saw it a long time ago. It's about this man, um, this couple the woman breaks up with the man and he is so sad and down on his life that he doesn't want to remember anything about her. And he hires this uh, group of people to uh, erase all of his memories while he's asleep. But as he's sleeping, he slowly realizes that it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. It's that tale as old as time mm -hmm. rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. That was stupid. It was really stupid. Yeah, and it's it's really great, and it's it's really impactful. Again, it carries a a deeper message with it. Um, and then I think all maybe not all trippy movies. If you gave me some time, I could probably think of a, a meaning for the one that you talked about. But I, I mean, if you watched it too, if I watched it too, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, watch it. It, uh, it. Eternal Sunshine for the Spotless Mind. 
good. It's a good one. I'm going to recommend the video game Control. And it is beautiful. And I, I was going to... I didn't know that we were doing one today. I forgot it. But we went out of time, didn't we? Yeah, we went out of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to recommend Control. And I did some research on it. And it, it is just... It is so visually stunning and so delightfully weird um it has very much scp kind of vibes um general story this girl named jesse enters this uh sort of secret federal society called the federal bureau of control which is um built around this idea of controlling paranormal or paranatural entities or things um while there she uh, finds this item and then becomes the new director because when you find this item and grab it, you're the director of the FBC. So it is... That's how it was in real life. <laughs> yeah. And it is brilliant. It's beautiful. It's styled in sort of a Metroidvania, but a three-dimensional Metroidvania. I've mentioned Metroidvania a lot. Metroidvania game is styled after the games, um, the classic Nintendo game Metroid and Castlevania, which uh, those games include... Uh, enemies, an overwhelming amount of enemies, um, gathering powers as you explore a map, uh, and a lot of backtracking into the map and finding new areas and new things. And um, yeah, so it is a three dimensional version of, of a Metroidvania game, which you don't find that often. Uh, so I thought it was an interesting take. And it's like I said, it's delightfully weird. It's just every tidbit, every collectible, every little piece of the world is building something or creating something better and it is so good well thanks for joining us on this intellectual journey hope you guys can hear us because uh i don't know if you can we will figure it and out and we'll figure it out uh yeah so bye bye Media for the Intellectually Impoverished is produced by Trey Taylor Smith and Miranda Randy Zapes. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at MFTII Podcast or email us at MFTII Podcast at gmail.com. That's MFT2I's Podcast. Thanks for listening. <laughs>